Before we dive into today's video, I'd like to give some context. Boardwalk Bullet at Kima Boardwalk in Texas has been one of my top bucket list roller coasters for as long as I can remember. Only problem is, in order to ride it, I would have to devote a trip solely to Houston, Texas. Texas is a big state, and I've already had to make two separate trips there in order to hit the major amusement parks. Kima Boardwalk is over four hours away from San Antonio and Dallas, which are the two major cities that have some theme parks around there. However, I'm not old enough to rent a car. So in 2021, I reached out to a few friends asking if they want to join me on a day trip to Houston. Unfortunately, those plans never came to fruition. I decided to hold off for a year in order to ask some friends if they wanted to join me or maybe ask the same friends if they wanted to bring this trip back, or I'd simply do it alone, which last year I wasn't exactly comfortable with doing. At the very end of January 2023, myself along with Josiah from National Coasters and our friend Alex had planned a trip to Houston. But one day before that trip, the unthinkable happened. Boardwalk Bullet would close due to off-season maintenance without any warning from the park or any reopening date. Everyone else was able to get their flights refunded from that trip, but I could not. Since I was with Spirit Airlines, the best I could do is rebook myself to a future date at an added cost. I just had to miraculously hope that Boardwalk Bullet would be reopened then. The others decided they wouldn't be able to make it due to work reasons, expensive flight costs, and a lack of interest in spending this much money on a singular coaster. But I decided to motivate myself by planning the best one-day itinerary to Houston possible, including four awesome destinations, which I can't wait to share with you in this video. But as you'll see in a second, I did not have very good luck on the day of my flight. So as you guys know, I'm heading to Houston, Texas today, or at least I suppose I'm going to Houston, Texas today. I have flights booked with Spirit Airlines, but they decided to cancel. Well, okay, they canceled my flight to Vegas, and then I have a connection to Houston, and that flight is heavily delayed. So what I've done is I've actually booked a flight with Southwest that'll get me to Vegas before this flight to Houston departs. So I'm just hoping that this flight to Houston isn't delayed further or canceled, otherwise this plan is gonna go to waste. All right, we made it to the airport, and I was just alert that the Southwest flight to Vegas was delayed. And so now I don't know if I'll be able to make it to Houston tonight. So I arrive and find out that my Southwest flight to Vegas is delayed two hours and therefore I wouldn't be able to make the connection to Houston. But I figured since I'm at the airport, I may as well talk to some people and get some answers, see if I can be put on some different flights. As it turns out, I am just barely going to be able to make this Houston flight as long as there is no more flight delays. I am the luckiest person alive right now. There's been so many delays today in both San Diego and the Las Vegas area because of inclement weather, I guess, something like that. Maybe something with the computer systems, I don't know. This has been the most stressful travel day I've ever had in my entire life. One hour later. I'm on the flight, let's go. I got some pretty cool shots from the plane. Like if you look down at the bottom of the screen, you can see SeaWorld. Also here I have Giant Dipper, Belmont Park. Just wanted to throw that in there. So I just made it to Las Vegas and the flight to Houston has not been delayed any more than it already has, which is great. Welcome to fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. All right, time to leave now. Is there a Houston? So update, we are boarding, and I also wanted to point out that there is a Wonder Woman golden lasso slot machine in front of our gate for our flight to Texas. God, I'm such a nerd. All right, guys, we finally made it to Houston. It's currently one in the morning. I'm tired as f All right, we finally made it to the Airbnb, guys. I have a bed. Oh, it's so nice to lay down. I'm really looking forward to this trip. Tomorrow we have an action-packed day. We're going to a bunch of different locations, four total that you guys are gonna wanna see. So with that being said, I guess I will see you all in the morning. Good night. Good morning, guys. Let's go ride some coasters. So today is like the core of the trip. It's our only full day here in Houston and I'm planning a big day. We're heading to four different parks or locations, if you will. We're gonna start by visiting the Houston Fair that they've got going on. It happens like every year around springtime. It's called the Houston Livestock and Rodeo. They have five roller coasters to ride, including one very rare one, which we'll talk about when we get there. Then we're gonna head down to Galveston and get on Iron Shark at Galveston Historic Pleasure Pier. From there, we're gonna make our way to Rainforest Cafe in Galveston, which is a bit unusual. You may be wondering, why am I going to Rainforest Cafe on this channel? Well, as it turns out, it's the only Rainforest Cafe with a ride. That's going to be an interesting stop. You'll see what I mean when I get there. And then to end out the day, we're going to head to Kima Boardwalk 
to ride Boardwalk Bullet, which is pretty much the sole reason that I wanted to come to Houston so bad. It's been a bucket list coaster for years, and I can't wait to ride that. And if you're wondering why I'm doing Kima Boardwalk last, it's because I wanted to ensure that we would get night rides on Boardwalk Bullet. So yeah, it's gonna be a really fun day, and I'll see you guys when we get to the fair. All right, guys, I've switched over to the GoPro. We are here at our first destination of the day. Uh, we're at the fair, but as you can see, here's the stadium where the Houston Texans play, and then right behind the trees over there, there's also the Astro Dome. And you know, just being here at like my first actual stop, I did go to a coffee shop earlier to get something to eat first, but being here at my first actual stop is like, just a reminder that I'm in Texas. It's just so crazy. Like there's the big Texas flag. They always like to wave their flags here. In some states you struggle to find like a state flag, but in Texas, they're absolutely everywhere. The state pride here is insane. But yeah, here's the stadium. We got the carnival entrance over there heading there right now. You can already see like they have two massive Ferris wheels, two booster rides. You got a sky ride, which is interesting. You don't see those very often at Ferris. And then also spinning wild mouse. I see a galaxy out there. Five roller coasters to get on, as I said. I've actually only been to a couple of fairs before. I've done the San Diego County Fair, of course. It's close to where I live. It's actually one of the biggest fairs in the country, though. I've been to the Orange County Fair, also in California. And then I went to the Rhein Kermis Fun Fair in Dusseldorf, Germany. But other than those three, I mean, these are this is like the fourth fair I've ever been to, which is kind of surprising. Now, of course, the coaster credits are the priority. I'm not sure about any flat rides. If I do ride a flat ride, it'll be because it's very unique. Because keep in mind, most of the flat rides here are also traveling between fairs. So there's a very good shot I'll have already ridden it. I like the San Diego Fair. So again, coasters are the priority, but I'll let you guys know if I see anything interesting. But yeah, should be fun. Let's head inside. Here we go, now we're in. Something cool is that before noon, you actually have free admission into this place, so I really lucked out planning this first. Uh, here's a better look at the Astro Dome behind all these crazy foods that they offer here. Got some testing going on. Of course, I'm here before the rides are officially open, but you know, I had nothing else to do, so figured why not. This one cycling right here is called OMG. I have been on this before at the San Diego County Fair. Yeah, I remember liking it. I'm a big flat ride fan, I do like flat rides, but of course, coasters are the priority today, and if I have time, definitely will be sure to get on any unique flat rides I spot, but, you know, obviously got to prioritize because we have a lot to do today. All right, so I went ahead and just bought 70 tickets, which is how much you'll need to get on all five roller coasters. To be honest, it wasn't that bad. I think I paid like 35 bucks, which for five coasters at a fair is actually quite reasonable. And this looks very cool, this SDC Raptor here. So I look forward to doing this. I'll probably get a ride on this first. the Raptor coaster now. First ride of the day. I believe this was manufactured by SDC or Zamperla, but either way, it's an Italian manufacturer. All right, here we go. Oh my God. Oh, actually, that's not bad. It's kind of smooth. Whoa! Oh! Get ready for the drop. Oh my God, this is gonna be ridiculous. USA in Maryland, which by the way is a clone of this ride. I have been on a clone of this before. I think this makes more sense as a traveling coaster though. No, that was fun. That was enjoyable. All right, guys, we are on coaster number two, Galaxy Coaster. Now, I believe most of the rides here are provided by Ray Comex Shows. Uh, so this is actually, I believe, the same Galaxy Coaster I rode at the Orange County Fair. However, the way I count traveling coasters is as long as it's in a different location, it's a new credit. I know not everyone counts them that way, but that's the beauty of the community. You can do what you want, count credits the way you want. If you count super loops, I don't judge you guys. I don't agree with it, but I'm not gonna judge any of you. So for me, this is, actually, this is funny. This is credit 666 for me. <laughs> like, holy crap, what a number. All right, here we go. Whoa! Oh my god! 
I'm in the back row, that drop was ridiculous. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, dude, these drops are crazy! <laughs> That's alarming. Got a helix. Oh! <laughs> nice. Oh no, not another drop. Oh, a trim break. Okay, good. Thought I was gonna go flying again. The restraints are so minimalist that it feels like you're gonna die every time you hit a drop like that. All right, nice, that was fun. All right, so I've now ridden two of the five coasters here. I did the Raptor coaster and the Galaxy coaster. So talk a little bit about both. The Raptor coaster, yeah, it was pretty fun actually. It was, it was quite smooth and of course that's a very unique ride for a fair to have. It's not like the best ride in the world or anything, but it was fun. The Galaxy coaster was kind of standard. I've ridden so many galaxies to the point where it doesn't really phase me anymore. Same with the next ride we're about to do. We're about to do a crazy mouse. Yeah, let's get a ride on that. Someone tell me why they call this the crazy coaster when this is a crazy mouse, but a cred's a cred, so let's do it. Oh, here's a much better look at the Astro Dome. Oh, oh. oh my God. Oh, it feels so weird sitting on like the outside seat. Oh man. Oh! <laughs> Oh, that looks like painful. Oh my god. The turns are like painful as hell, but the drops are smooth. Oh, here, it unlocked for spinning. Okay, don't spin too much. Oh, it's not, not spinning a lot. Okay, that's good. I'm so exhausted from all the traveling yesterday that like I don't want to get sick from any of these rides. Oh my god, we're spinning now. Okay, this is not very good. <laughs> Oh. Brakes. All right. Not bad. Not bad. My least favorite of the three coasters so far, I think, but still fun. It seems like every like third person has a cowboy hat. <laughs> so even though I said I was going to stay away from flat rides most likely because they're not very unique to this fair, there is one I noticed that I might want to go ahead and do, which of course is the Tango over here manufactured by KMG. I might want to do this. This looks pretty fun. And I hear it's unique and kind of unreliable. So might want to go ahead and do it while I have the opportunity here in Houston. Oh God, I'm on the KMG Tango. I needed something to wake me up. Oh my God. I didn't know this had stand-up seats. I'm literally standing. Like this is ridiculous. I'm literally so exposed. I'm standing and like flipping everywhere. <laughs> oh my god! This is terrifying. Oh my god. Oh! Oh! Oh my god. Oh no. Oh, what the? F oh! <laughs> no, this is too high, bro. Move, 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 move. Oh bro, help me. Oh, 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 what the hell are these forces? Oh my god. Oh my god. Dude, all I've had this morning was a cinnamon roll and a coffee. <laughs> Oh my god, tell me it's over, I'm so done. As you just saw from that on-ride reaction, Tango here was absolutely insane. I feel like I'm gonna throw up right now. That was so intense. I actually haven't felt this close to feeling like I have to throw up. Maybe ever. <laughs> that thing was flipping me everywhere. Oh my god, I'm glad I rode it though. It was really fun. All right, heading out of the fair now. It was a lot of fun. It was actually one of the better fairs I've been to for sure. And it's actually one of the only fairs I've been to as well. But that had a really nice ride line from what I could tell. I mean, I got all five coaster credits, got on that one uh, Tango flat ride. That was nuts. I'm so glad I got to do that. Only spent about an hour and a half in the fair, but that was all the time I needed. So now we're heading on to our next stop, which is Galveston Historic Pleasure Pier for Iron Shark. Let's do it. Of course, when you come to Texas, you gotta go to Bucky's. This is a pretty big Bucky's too, and it's my first one I've ever been to. 
here in uh, Houston. We're all actually on the way to Galveston. Man, I got the best Uber driver ever. He's actually from Arkansas, which is interesting. I've never met anyone from Arkansas, but he's super cool. He's like, bro, like, let's stop at Bucky's. I'll buy you whatever you want in Bucky's, like, because it's your first time in Houston. Man, and here it is. The myth, the legend. Bucky's, the beaver. <laughs> Bro, look at this place. Look at this food. Oh my god. That meat looks crazy. <laughs> this is a gas station, guys. Like, oh my god. You probably recognize, like, all the beavers here. Like, they're always on t-shirts. Like, people from outside of Texas always have Bucky's shirts. Like, I see it all the time when I'm traveling. I'm looking for some water. I just, I'm so dehydrated. And then I want to get something to eat here, too. Because, man, look at this. Like, they have, like, fudge. Oh my gosh. Banana pudding. <laughs> Dude, this is insane. Burritos and tacos. Got a bakery. Oh my god. Dude, it all looks good too. It's not like low quality food at all. Wow. My Uber driver is about to ask them to do a chant for me. Can y'all make that happen for him? He says we got a YouTuber here. <laughs> So after an hour of driving, we're finally here. Galveston Historic Pleasure Pier. We got the beach over there. Man, everything's running, looks good. It's very busy, but of course it is spring break. And part of the reason I wanted to come actually during Houston spring break was to ensure that Boardwalk Bullet over at the other Boardwalk Park I'm going to would be open because it does have some issues with the park not opening it sometimes. I don't know the deal with that thing. It seems unreliable. But yeah, should be a fun time here at Galveston. I'm gonna get an Iron Shark just like once. It's probably all I'm gonna do to be honest because I really am eager to get on Boardwalk Bullet. Of course, after this, we have Rainforest Cafe and the Rapids over there too. All right, let's get some tickets and get on Iron Shark, guys. Yo, we got some fans of the channel. What's up? Here's Iron Shark. Oh yeah, I'm here at Galveston. About to get an iron charge. This looks really good. My first time doing this layout as well. It's a Eurofighter. I'm going to Tampa and Darien Lake, but of course I've never been to Darien Lake, so I'm looking forward to getting on this. This is really fun. Really tall too. I'm kind of surprised by how like big it is. The greatest creatures in our motion. They are one of the animals that people fear. You guys know what I've been listening to the whole time in line for an hour? This. Sharks. <laughs> Sharks. The greatest predators in our oceans. They are one of the animals that people fear the most. 52 miles per hour. Flip upside down four times. That sounds insane. Iron Sharks. We have waited over an hour for Iron Shark, but we're here in the front row. Oh my God. I went too hard. What's up? What's up, bro? Oh man, here we go. Oh wow, look at that view. Holy crap. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. Dude, the views are so good. Whoa. Oh. Dude, we're like over water. What? My seat is over the water right now. Oh it's o this is the water right here. Okay. Oh. That was awesome. I thought it was amazing. I thought it was, was about awesome. to die. That was awesome, yeah. right? We waited over an hour to get an iron shark. I'm so, so surprised that the line was that long. But it's because the operations were unfortunately quite slow. That was a downside. But the good news is that I was hanging out with two people the whole time in line. These two guys. What's up? How was it, guys? Like, great, great. Your picture's over there, too. I thought I was gonna die for like three seconds. <laughs> right when we were going down, dude. Yep, that was a fun girl flower. I really enjoyed it. A little bit jolty, like not as smooth as I would have liked, but the good news is it only had a lap bar, which made it really fun, really 
free feeling. Great air time on that drop. That drop is fantastic. I like the little like fast S-bend twist thing. You get some good air time on that actually, like a really sudden jolt of air time. Yeah, really fun ride. It is a shame that we waited so long for such a short coaster, but can't win them all. I gotta get out of here. I got I got places to be, guys. I don't regret anything. It was great meeting you all. Yeah. Sharks! Sharks. Really nice setting for the park, and even though I only did one ride, you can tell this is a really nice boardwalk park. Yes, it's a shame the operations weren't better in Iron Shark, but glad to have ridden it, and quite honestly, I, I don't see it being any better at Kima Boardwalk, so I'm not gonna knock this park too much on it. Boardwalk parks tend to have slower operations, actually. But yeah, I'm feeling much more awake, much more energized after that ride. Definitely the like strong breeze of the wind has also waken me up but yeah heading out of galveston after that one ride on iron shark really really cool would definitely recommend stopping here for a couple hours now we're heading to rainforest cafe galveston to check out that rapids ride that's gonna be really really cool i don't know too many people that have done that we are now here at rainforest cafe in galveston look at that entrance oh my god from what I understand, this is the best rainforest cafe on earth. In addition, it's kind of one of the last ones. There's only like 17, 18 left. I don't know, something around there. For those of you who don't know, I grew up in Florida. I was born there and I went to rainforest cafe all the time when I was young. I loved it. The reason I'm here at this Galveston one is because they have this ride, a fully functioning ride, let alone a river rapids ride, a themed river rapids ride in here. I can't believe this even exists. I mean, it looks like it has a bit of a line, but I don't mind waiting it. It's going to be so much fun to get on this. It's honestly going to be amazing just seeing all the animatronics. I don't expect any like crazy rapids or drops or anything like that because I know Rainforest Cafe has always been like family focused or more for kids per se. But yeah, like I, I can't wait to ride this. I'm kind of nerding out. Oh my gosh, we're about to get on. Waited about 45 minutes, maybe a little under that. Um, yeah, quite a long time. The operations have not been the best. And also it's a pretty low capacity rapids. There's only one, two, three, four, five, six seats. But I don't really care about the weight because as soon as we got into like this room here, this station, the smell is amazing. It smells like Rainforest Cafe, like to the max. Like I'm taking the biggest whiffs I possibly can because it just reminds me of my childhood. You can kind of get a sneak peek of what it looks like back there. Of course, I'll take you guys on for an on-ride POV. Wow, the thing looks amazing. I'm, I know this is supposed to be more of like a dark ride experience, so I'm very excited, and the smell already made it worth coming here. Like, I'm not kidding when I say that. The smell is just perfect. Okay, we are on the rapids. Honestly, the smell, the atmosphere in here is just amazing. I mean, already, I will say the ceiling, there's absolutely nothing on the ceiling which takes away a little from the immersion. But otherwise, the theming around here looks absolutely fantastic. I can't believe I'm on a rapids ride at Rainforest Cafe. Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. My man's just glitched out. This is one of the most surreal rides I've ever been on. No, this this is gonna seem really ridiculous, but this is truly like special to me. The fact that I'm riding something like this. Oh my God, there's a monkey up there. You guys see that? The monkey is just swinging on like a... Wow, that's like a near miss element. Dude, I could literally reach up and touch this thing. Look, I'm, I'm touching it. I'm literally touching it. Oh my God. Like these animatronics obviously have like very subtle movements. They're not advanced by any means, but the fact that there's animatronics at all is like amazing. You have to remember what this is. We're not at a Disney park. We're not even at a Six Flags park. This is a rainforest cafe in the middle of Galveston, Texas. I, I mean, there's like 17, like I said, there's like 17 uh, rainforest cafes left in the world. Wow. <laughs> there's a snake. When you ride this though, you can begin to understand why the line moves so slow. I mean, yeah, the capacity is not great as you can see, but not, in addition to that, it's just a very slow moving ride. There's no like drops or not even any rapids at all. Like I, I was expecting at least a little something. Entering this like temple. Oh my god! 
Tell me that's gonna turn off. We're not actually gonna get... Dude, I'm already so cold. Are we really... Wait. I'm actually so scared. Are we gonna go under there? Oh, thank God. We were getting close and it wasn't going away and I thought for a second we were for sure gonna get soaked. I almost had a heart attack. I'm still gonna drip down and... Oh my god, hurry the heck up. Oh, wow. Okay, so at this point, the ceiling is not an issue anymore because we're like in this like temple. I'll tell you what, that did not disappoint for me at least. I mean, obviously the nostalgic reason, but that was actually a pretty well themed experience. Again, if they if they fix the capacity and then fix the uh, the ceiling and like themed that up and maybe dimmed out the lighting a little bit, that would be like a 10 out of 10 ride. <laughs> like that was that was a lot of fun. All right, so I'm out in the sunshine once again, so I can formally talk about that Rapids ride, go over some of the pros and the cons, because I don't, I'm not gonna make a separate review video for this. I, I, I really just wanna talk about it here in this vlog. As far as the pros, first of all, I can't believe this exists. Like the fact that this is at a Rainforest Cafe location, one of the last remaining ones in the world, in fact, is shocking. If you're waiting for a table, you like you get a wait time, that is such a good attraction to just do, and then obviously you can eat when you're done. Third, it's not unreasonably priced. Like overall, solid pricing, not, not super expensive. As far as the cons, things that I would do to enhance the ride experience. Number one, fix the capacity issue. The fact that there's only six seats per Rapids is a little bit unfortunate and I feel like that could be easily modified and changed and make the experience much better because the line moves so slow. I waited about 45 minutes for that when it should have been more like 15. Also, like I said in the POV video, the ceiling was like really untouched uh, and looked really unfinished. I think that took away from the immersion a bit. Also, I think if they just dimmed the lighting down, both in the restaurant and on the ride, it would just make the whole experience much more immersive. I think they kind of missed the mark on immersion for this ride, but theming wise, they did a pretty good job, especially once you got into that temple at the end. Obviously very basic animatronics, but like, what do you expect from a Rainforest Cafe? That was really cool. I'm so glad I've written that. And uh, yeah, highly recommend it. If you're coming to Galveston Pleasure Pier, it's like a $5 Uber right away. So up next, we're heading to Kima Boardwalk to get on Boardwalk Bullet. And guys, I can't believe it. I mean, this is basically the sole reason I came to Houston. All these other things were just kind of to enhance the day, which it did. I've had an amazing day so far, but this is just going to make it even better. I cannot wait to ride Boardwalk Bullet. Like I said, I'm doing this last as my last park slash destination of the day, intentionally so that I can get night rides on Boardwalk Bullet. There will be POVs hopefully in the daytime if I get there on time uh, before the sun sets and then also nighttime POV. So I'll see you guys when we get to Kima Boardwalk. I can't wait and it should be a great time. Holy sh This ride is massive. <laughs> it is an incredible like work of art just from outside of the park. I mean, I just got here and you can just see how many crossovers it has just from here. It's just unbelievable. I cannot believe I'm looking at this thing right now. Now, obviously, I did just arrive, but you can tell the operations suck <laughs> because I haven't seen this thing cycle once and I know it's open because there's people in line. I'm just really patiently waiting because I want to get at least one off-ride shot before I head in. But yeah, next I'll see you guys, we'll be inside. How fitting is it that I arrive and it immediately breaks? Just my luck, right? This is a very unreliable Gravity Group coaster. I've seen a lot of people visit, especially as of late, and it just constantly breaks. I don't know what the problem is here, but very intriguing. To be honest, I'm not super nervous about missing it for the night, um, but I don't want to say that because I feel like I'll jinx myself. I have very bad anxiety when it comes to that. But no, they are working on it and I'm hoping for the best. Oh wow, Stray Cat out of nowhere. Me and the cat are waiting for Boardwalk Bullet to reopen. They said give or take 20 to 30, 40 minutes, something like that. Apparently there's some issue that they have to address before it can open again. It is a shame that as soon as I get here, it breaks. Seems like a lot of people have a similar problem. Regardless, I'm just admiring the structure of the ride. I think it's so amazing how it like, weaves in and out of itself. And that's one of the characteristics of this ride that's so special. It has more crossovers than any other wooden roller coaster in the world. Meaning we will be going over and under previous pieces of track that we'll have traversed constantly. And it's awesome. Even the station, you can kind of see it back there. It's like in the structure. It is so cool. But yeah, it looks like they may be doing some test runs here pretty soon. I'm gonna go ahead and try to get these shots. Hopefully in time, the sun is setting, as you can see over there, very pretty by the way. The stray cat literally just got in the queue line for bullet. Does this cat have a name? Is it out here often? Like, is this like boardwalk bullet cat? No, oh my God. 
The cat is going in the structure. No. After waiting for 45 minutes, it's finally testing. My first time seeing it though. Oh my God, that thing is like a lightning bolt. It is literally a boardwalk bullet. <laughs> what a fitting name. Feeling much more optimistic now. It seems like they fixed whatever the problem was and they just need to do some testing before it's back open. There it goes. Oh my God. Yes, after like an hour and a half of just watching this thing test and like watching them do work on it, it's open and everyone's like celebrating. Oh my God, guys. I've never had so much pressure on me to ride a roller coaster. Like it's been so nerve wracking to get on this thing. I cannot believe this is actually happening right now. I have been trying to ride Boardwalk Bullet for years. It's been one of my top bucket list coasters for as long as I can remember, and I'm about to do it. Oh my god, guys. Here we go. Oh my god. Oh! 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 Oh my god! Good start! <laughs> what? Oh my god! Ah! Whoa! Oh! Oh my god! Whoa! Ah! Where are we going? Oh my god! Dude, this layout is insane! Right, it's so long! What the hell? When is it ending? Oh my god! Holy sh! Holy crap, I got on and then it breaks. We can't make it to the station. Oh my god. I was one train away from missing my ride. I might not have gotten on it at all. Holy crap. Let's see how the front compares to the back. Boardwalk bullet round two, baby. Oh no. Oh shit. I just got off a of Boardwalk Bullet, my first two rides on it. I decided not to do a reaction after my very first ride because to be honest, I couldn't process it. And I know you guys like seeing that initial excitement because I'm always super excited when I got, get off of a ride like this for the first time. However, we were stuck on the brake run for like 20 minutes actually, like quite a while. So by the time I got off, that hype kind of died down a little bit. So I decided to get a second ride, this time in the very front row. And I'll tell you, that feels very different than the back. I definitely think it's a back row ride for sure. The way you get whipped around like that is amazing. But the front is still very, very fun. But yeah, in the back, that is an elite wooden roller coaster. Definitely one of the best woodies I've ever been on. It definitely lives up to the hype and it was worth coming out to Houston to do that. Honestly, all the stresses I've had planning this trip and actually doing this trip, all the flight delays, cancellations even, it's been a nightmare, but I'll tell you, it was worth it for this ride. That was absolutely amazing. And I'm just so happy I got on it too because of the stresses when I got to the park. To be honest, I wasn't sure if it was gonna reopen. I, I felt optimistic because I kind of have to be optimistic in a situation like that. But all you need is patience 
and we got it. I'm so, so grateful to have been on Boardwalk Bullet here at Kima Boardwalk in Kima, Texas. Honestly, come out and ride this if you haven't already. It's an absolutely world-class ride. We're gonna get back in line, do it one more time before the park closes at 10 p.m. It's about 9.40 right now. Yeah, can't wait. The way this thing shakes the queue line is insane. Oh my. I can barely stand up straight. So I've now had three rides on Boardwalk Bullet, and I can safely say that's one of the best wooden roller coasters in the world. But one of the best roller coasters in the world, to be honest. Like that is an architectural marvel. I'll talk more about it when I get back to my Airbnb because my Uber driver is about to show up. Overall, it's been an amazing one day in Houston. We've done so much. Uh, it's been incredible. Again, I'll wrap it up when we get back to the Airbnb, so I'll see you guys then. Well, I just got back to the Airbnb and I am so exhausted. I forgot to mention at any point in this video that last night I slept for maybe four hours. My body was just not functioning properly, <laughs> but you know, it was all worth it for today. It was, it was an absolutely awesome day. We did literally everything we wanted to do, all seven coaster credits accomplished. We got on a really cool flat ride at the fair. We got on the Rainforest Cafe Rapids. Honestly, it's been amazing. And we've met quite a few really cool people as well. Thank you all so much for joining me in this vlog. It's been a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed today. Highly recommend doing one of these day trips, you know, find a city that has a really cool coaster that's on your bucket list and make it happen. This trip was actually very, very affordable, surprisingly, even with all the Uber rides. If there's one thing you should take away from this video, patience and positive attitude, that's key. When you're on a trip like this, there are so many things that can happen. Obviously, you guys saw the flight delays and cancellation that happened the first day. You guys saw what happened with Boardwalk Bullet the second I got to Kima Boardwalk. If it weren't for my patience and positive attitude, I can't guarantee that I would even be in Houston today. So with that, I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.